and we are back on Top Dogs. But before we begin this today's episode, I wanted to ask Whiplash, how was your con experience at Megaplex? It's amazing, honestly. It was much better than last year. Even though last year was not a bad con at all, it was just, it was one of the first few cons after COVID. You know, COVID had, like, started calming down a bit. It was one of the first few cons to come back. It was... I guess shorter people, shorter staff, and all that stuff. But honestly, this year, to be fair, I think is my favorite theme. I, I'll put actually, I'll put in my top three favorite themes that a con's ever had, honestly. Because Megaplex, I still enjoy Game On and Gunslinger. Oh god, is it? I have it right here. Give me a second. Uh, Galactic Gunslinger. There we go. Those are my th- top three so far. Galactic and Gunslinger. Megaplex. Will- like yes. robots and cowboys? Yeah, robots and cowboys in space. Like Cowboy Bebop. Think of Cowboy Bebop. Okay, okay. Yeah. The reason why I brought that up is because there is many positions to fill out when you are running a con, correct? Oh yeah, there's a hundred. There's a ton of them. Well, the, in our positions, many furries have many jobs. And that's actually today's episode, which is uh, furries in the workforce. So let's start with a topic about our first jobs. And let's be real, our first jobs are not always the best. I'll never <laughs> go back there. Now I'm curious, tell me what was your first job and tell me the pros and the cons to it. Cause was the pay good? You couldn't pay me to give you any sort of pros about this place. <laughs> I will never go back there ever. I mean, it's what most people usually go to when they can get a first job because no other job wants to give a high schooler a job because they think no experience. Even though they want experience. Yeah. I used to work at McDonald's. I hate that place so much with a passion. I hate it. The one thing I always heard about when it comes to working at a fast food joint is that anybody that usually works at a fast food joint never eats there anymore. Because you guys learned some things about it that not a lot of the public people know in the industry. I mean, when I worked there, there wasn't anything like secretive about the items we got in to just cook and everything. Um, it's just the fact that you see the food so much and so often that you're, you literally, you start having a disgust for that food. I have tried going back there, like, I've gone back there since I quit back in 2015? Yeah, 2015. Um, I've gone back there three times. And every okay. time I've hated it. <laughs> it has maybe turned me to the point I just hate the food. Like, I worked there from 2012 to 2015. Even in another place and blah, blah, blah. But yeah. I was at... Well, well, we actually ate some McDonald's yesterday at Ronnie's house. And most of us were eating the chicken nuggets. Because a lot of people in that household likes the chicken nuggets. Wendy's nuggets are better. That I will not disagree with. Thank you. (laughs) My job was horrible, too. So before I had a fursuit, my first job was working in a factory with no AC, and it involved a lot of hospital linen. I remember before I got in, I had to get some shots. I needed to get a hepatitis B shot because there was a chance of needles and feces and blood being in that linen. Our job was to clean it. And so that was disgusting, but I worked my butt off to make sure I saved that money to get my fursuit. I, that is actually a fact. I paid my first off, my first, in my first job that I paid my fursuit off doing my first job. You got paid well, right? (laughs) That sounds like a biohazard job. Oh, very much is. I did get paid very well. About 23 bucks an hour. Oh, see? Man, your first paying job was good. Mine was like fucking whatever minimum wage was in Florida eight, nine years ago, which was like seven something an hour. 
But to be fair, wow. you're also working in a very, you know, dangerous condition, so yours makes sense. Very much a dangerous condition. And I hope no one ever touches feces or needles or blood. <laughs> that was disgusting. I did remember we did have to work in the South Carolina heat. You know how South Carolina is very close to Florida. So the humidity was bad. No AC. We had to wear these uh, plastic suits and wear rubber gloves. I had to double glove myself because I was that worried about getting something. So... To be fair, I'll be the same way. I, I'm a very, like, nice, nasty person when it comes to, like, anything. So I'm like, if I touch, like, in retrospect, if I, like, go to the... God, I can't say... <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. Shit, never mind. I was gonna say, like, if I just, like, accidentally touch myself, I will go to the bathroom and wash my hands. <laughs> Oh, in what context do you mean by that? Hold on. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> I said accidentally touch myself, all right? <laughs> Ac accidentally. I hope, you have, I hope you have enough soap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're not that. To be fair, the most bacterial ridden place in your entire body is your tongue. Really? clarity of that but yes is that true colton <laughs> i know you're not the right scientist but we're gonna ask you anyways <laughs> <laughs> he's not even gonna talk to us oh there he is <laughs> <laughs> i said isn't it right that the tongue is the most bacterial ridden place in your entire body There you oh. go, see? Yeah. There thing, we go. This, yeah. So sharing okay. saliva is the worst thing you do. <laughs> Point taken, but we don't listen. We're furries, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell me about a job that you absolutely loved. Uh... There's no, like, love to these jobs, but I enjoy doing them for the time being. So, like, honestly, my job at the moment, I don't mind doing. It's just my company as a whole is screwing everyone over in pay-wise. Because since our new CEO has taken over, we've had three pay cuts. And that's why I'm looking for a different job. Because every other job, every other company around my area is literally giving bonuses and raises to their employees. And ours is like... You know what? We just went through a recession phase. Fuck you. We're gonna take your money away. So, uh, three cuts so far, and I'm going to fucking leave because they don't deserve my work. But I don't mind doing what I do. It's just not going to give them my, you know, give them my skills. The other job was I used to work for a credit union, which was easy, honestly. It was an easy job. It was just mainly talking to people. What was it called? It was like a uh, think of a retail operator, pretty much. It was pretty simple. You just talk to people about their accounts, and if they had a problem, if it wasn't in your section, you get them a hold of another section of the company. It was a really easy job. I just left that job because it was. I can do physical labor, and it will never tire me out. But I cannot sit down all day at a computer and leave not feeling exhausted. It mentally drains you, and that's the problem about me with sitting at a computer all day. Now, I know we have lots and lots of furry ITs out there, and I'm glad they could do that. I'm glad they could sit there, do that, do that, go home, get on their own computer and do that. But me, I am just someone who's a physical person. I cannot sit down all day. It might be because my... Is it, uh, no, it's not OCD. What is it? ADHD? It might be ADHD. You have a hard time sitting still. still. Yes. Okay, then it is ADHD. Yeah, it's hundred percent ADHD. <laughs> Me? But and I worked. Yep. Oh, go ahead. No, you what? Uh, go ahead. Nah, you. I was just gonna say like I enjoyed that job and people around it, but nah, and it paid well, but <laughs> nah. Okay. Well, with me. My job that I loved a lot, 
lot was when I worked for Ajax Turner. And, and Ajax Turner, what they do, they are a distributor for Budweiser products. Why I love that job so much is because I like to manage inventory and how much they get. The only place that you couldn't do that at was Publix because they wanted to make their own orders. But the problem is, is that their managers like to overorder a product and it would go out of date. And that was the one thing I hated. The only, the made the big con about it, what I hated about being a salesman for Ajax Turner was the fact that customers can be really, really rude. Mm -hmm. and, they do, and they think we're just worker ants and I hate it. No, trust me. That's how our salesmen are with uh, Pepsi. And that's what that's what all the publicists do too. They make their own orders and then they like oversize the order for like no freaking reason. And then most of the shit goes out of date. And just I don't know what it is with his Publix, but it's just Publix being Publix. The only thing good about the Publix is their Subway sandwiches. Now we can talk about those all day, and I'll be happy about that. Subway sandwiches. Boy, is a pub sub, that's all you gotta say, it's pub sub, not Subway Sandwich. Oh, my bad. <laughs> oh my god. Is it the so pub. bad that I guess Subway has such a, like, has such a noticeable, like, notice, noticeable uh, existence in this world that now we consider it every single, like, submarine sandwich as a Subway Sandwich. <laughs> We like we have Firehouse, we have Subway, we have Jersey Mike's, uh, Jersey Mike's Quiznos, which exists in some places still. Um, uh, Jersey Mike's. Okay, well you said Jersey Mike's. Uh, what was the other ones? Firehouse. A few more. There you go. Firehouse. Firehouse and you have Publix and. Blah. But I guess that's what Subway is. But Subway to me is like the low tier chain. Hmm. Okay. Okay. What is your, uh, well, I guess you're still working on your current job that you're not really happy with right now, correct? Correct. I was going to say that uh, the other job, the reason also I left it is it demotivated me to do literally anything. So I gained a lot of weight from that job. That was where I was at my peak. And this job, like, it helped me get lose weight, but I also motivated myself to go back to the gym and start, you know, eating healthy and all that such. So... At that point, I weighed 250, and now I'm down to 168. What would be your future, What would be your dream job? That's that's a good question to ask you. Uh, okay, we're gonna do a realistic one and an ideal one. All right. Uh, realistic one okay. is I want to go back to college and I want to finish up my mechanical engineering degree because I do enjoy anything mechanical. Honestly, like that's just a given. Uh, ideally, I would be able to continue doing this and doing Twitch streams and continuing doing TikTok and hopefully increasing my presence, hopefully. And just enjoy doing that because I enjoy doing this a lot. But, like, as my realistic idea is, like, I don't know if this will ever work out. There's a very rare chance of it working out, but I still enjoy doing it no matter what. But I want to go back to college and finish my engineering degree anyways, so I can have something there that I like doing. Mine is realistically, and I'm going to follow that standard as well. Realistically, I'm still in college. I'm a full-time full -time college student. I'm trying to go into IT and cybersecurity and all that. That's what my major would be. My ideal job is to be an entrepreneur. And I won't go any further on that subject right now. <laughs> hey, we can, uh, we can, me and you can work together on that. <laughs> I mean, technically we already are. We just can't say you much. <laughs> to be fair, true. True, true, true. True. <laughs> yeah, we'll just leave that one be. But anyways, uh... There's also other cool jobs that furries do. Someone, there is furries that already have their jobs established. Like, we can use Colton as an example, who actually went to go study to get his PhD. Stuff like that. He did that. And he yeah, Mr. has a he has a degree in human biology. He's an expert in it, which is pretty cool. But his main focus is the eye. 
Yeah, isn't that right, Mr. Pretty? Pr oh, fucking yeah, Mr. Pretty Huge Dick. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Wow! No, puny wow. horse dick. There we go. <laughs> 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 Jesus Christ! Wow! What? You're degrading him? Wow! He enjoys it. <laughs> oh so this is definitely gonna be on a uh, topic clip for Talk Talks. Mm -hmm. That's definitely gonna be on there. <laughs> There's also Scorchy, our. Who has a uh, master's degree in cybersecurity, which is also pretty cool. We also got Grayson who works in cybersecurity. So, I wanted to point out, Colton, Grayson, and Scorchin, what all three of those guys have in common? They're gay. That's one, but what's the other one? I'm talking job-related. <laughs> uh, job-related? Uh, well, I know uh, Scorchy is um, not... He travels the country doing his job. God. Grayson, I actually haven't talked to Grayson too much, so I'm not sure. I mean, Colin has a PhD. All, Kim. They're all federal government employees. Oh, yeah. That's right. Be I careful, Norman. The, the, the first. They're taking over the federal government. <laughs> I mean, I was a federal government employee at that credit union job because it technically was ran by the government. That's also So true. it used to be one. It used to be one, but it's whatever. And well, also, another thing is that we have lots and lots and lots of military furs. And I know a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, one of our buddies, Koenig, he served in the military. I know he told me he served in the Iraq War. Ooh, like maybe like near the time. end of it. Ah, uh, yeah, I imagine that. We also have Bio, another not Bio Gods, but another Bio that we know who who still currently serves in the military. And like I said, I have lots of people, even locally to me, that still serve in the military. Yeah, it's just, you're gonna always, like, I bet to you, you can take a random group of 10 furries, and at least out of those 10 furries, at least one or two of them will be in the military. That's very true. Or one or two of them will be an artist. Well, there's many furry artists. <laughs> oh, 100%. Or you could say the same thing about content creators, because honestly, it seems like even though me and you are content creators, and technically we are known in the community, there are a ton of content creators in general. There's a ton of ton content creators, yes. But I always give people advice. When you want to go into content creation, do it for fun. And understand if you want to go further into your field, then you need to be a little bit more consistent. That's the problem. <laughs> yes, but don't be too like if you do streaming, then be consistent. But if you make videos like for YouTube or TikTok, don't be that consistent. Like, don't make one every day because you will burn yourself out very quickly. I give that to anyone who starts TikToks because I talked to a lot of people recently that have like started TikToks because they know me and I've met them. And they're like, yeah, I'm gonna get into TikTok. I'm gonna make a video or two every day. I'm like, you don't want to do that. <laughs> you will emit, you will kill your spirit on doing this, and you also will kill your motivation on like making fun videos that you want to do, because you're trying to get yourself out there, and you're trying to, you know, just you're just trying to make as many videos as you can. And honestly, I see that as. Like, I see, like, you could be having fun still doing it, but also see that... It, oh, there goes my body. Oh, hello. Every, every time we film. Um, but also see that as, like, you're trying to find an easy way to, like, get popular quickly. Like, just making one video, then hopefully you get hits. <laughs> That's how I see it. If you're going to try to make profit off of what content creation you do, 
I wouldn't do that for that reason at first, but what I'm gonna say is this. If you have reached a certain peak in what you were doing, and you want to do something that's based on your ideal career that you want to do, you have to go in the expectation of your field that you want to do and not make profit at first for a few years. Oh no, yeah, exactly. I mean, when I first started this, I had like no, like I had no expectations of getting paid for doing this. I was just doing it for purely fun and I was enjoying doing it. I just started making video or like as I kept doing it, I started doing VR videos and lots of VR videos I made was hitting off and I'm like, well, I was not expecting this. So I also want to give the opinion on one other thing and that is um, if furries want to make content or they want to do something in their career and my advice to and this is just based on my opinions and if you want to stand out more in your community. You you need to do things that are completely different and do not follow the trend. Because I see where furries are now starting to do the whole, well, if this popular furry made it on Twitch, maybe I can. That's the problem. You're following the trend where it's becoming too much difficult. There's too much competition. You need to do something on a very specific niche if you want to make a certain career out of something. I don't no, exactly. expect to make anything out of it for a while because you still need to build that foundation. Yeah, like you can probably go to any person, you go to any uh, extremely popular furry right now, or just any furry that has a presence in a community. You can ask them how long it took them to actually build themselves up in a community. Like, I am like, I guess, a known furry, but I'm not like, let's say. Uh, Whiskey Dingo or Danos or JT Whiskey. It's like those are like the ones that are very well known up there. But they've been doing it for longer than I have. And I've been doing this since May or May last year. Right? And I've had my ups and downs like when I just like kind of fall off and just stop doing stuff for a bit so I can actually relax. Because this is also things that actually is very draining is it's just draining honestly to do all the time because especially mm -hmm. if you're trying to work a full-time job and then come home and do content creation streaming um just anything like that is taking a lot out of you because you have to worry about all that plus you have you know do stuff around the house you might need to go do some go hang out with friends because we all need a uh we all need a uh, physical contact in our lives we also need to have you know that that. It's just a lot to like worry about and the way I've been doing it, which honestly another reason why I'm trying to leave my job because it's been like reasons I'm just like late on doing streams and late on like making content video or TikTok videos is because I've been working so much every week and every day I get home I'm just I'm not exhausted but I'm just like questioning if I even should like do a stream that night. Cause at that point in time I'm not who I think I am when I want to go out on camera like I like being my 100% myself when I do that because I'm much more excited much more energetic and much more talkative much more everything and just when I go to work and come home I'm just <sighs> that's also an idea I wanted to point out a lot of furries go through that and which is like we hyper focus on a good idea we do and it's very noticeable with a lot of furries, and they do that all the time. The thing is, if you want to make it in whatever uh, career field that you want to go into, that's not going to work. You need to learn that, yes, times are tough, but you need to be consistent. Don't hyper-focus on work. Be consistent. Otherwise, the work you pay off is not going to work. Because you can't True. give up. Even when you are tired... Even when you don't want to do it, you still have to do it. I mean, no, I still do it. Because oh, yeah. I, we have to. <laughs> this is yeah. our show. <laughs> I know this is our show. Well, yeah, we still have to do it. <laughs> Even though today's my but we love day and you guys. And also, one thing. You do have to believe in your idea. Whatever idea that you're trying to believe in. Oh, yeah. 100%. You gotta believe in what you want to do. Uh, if you don't put, to me, if you don't put 100% love into what you want to do. Like, every time I make a TikTok video, it's... 
there's something I think of like with those videos like I find a sound like I want to do more original content one day like I've done two it's not a lot but I've done two of them and I enjoy doing them but I take those sounds and then I think of something that's happened in the furry community and just go at it and just make some caption that fits it very well and that's what you mainly do like you can make take those sounds and do what you want with them but usually this in my way i just do that it's making something funny pretty much that's the hard part like, especially what do you think, continuously doing it what do you think is the difference between a job and a career uh, a job is a nine to five job that you go to just to work so you can live life. A career is something that you um, want to have, something that's going to be something you enjoy doing for the rest of your life. That's a very short explanation. Yeah, I would agree to that. Career to me would be, you know, something you really, really wanted to do. Whether that would be no, no. your dream job, and definitely me being an entrepreneur is one of my dream jobs. It's definitely not going to be easy because there's a lot to learn in that field. You don't even necessarily even have to go to college to really understand how business works. You don't, but it definitely helps. But I also do want to, um... No, I just... I really do... Like, I really do enjoy doing this. And honestly, I hope it works out and we're continuously going to keep doing it too. Just... To have fun push names out there and hope everyone enjoys the show and what me and fiction do as well and i'm mm -hmm. still gonna go back to college and and get my degree because i do enjoy mechanical engineering and i wouldn't mind being an engineer i've always had that like feeling because i went to uh, college a few years ago but i need to go back now i'm getting old <laughs> are we all getting old we age every day every second maybe a millisecond yeah the thing is, what's the saying? Every minute. <sighs> god, what was it saying? It was a saying. I have forgotten it now. Oh my god. It was something about every second is a second that you won't be younger. I don't know what you're talking about. I think Andreas looks always young. Especially being a drag queen. Doing what they do. They are always young. That's also yeah, a very he... cool job. It's very interesting <laughs> that you see a furry also be a drag queen like him. There's a few of them, actually. But, yeah, he works it very well. Gotta say, though. That boy. That boy. His vibe check still screwed him over. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm never gonna let him go, like, let him go on that. I mean, I know it's a bad thing. He's gotten over now and just sees it as a joke, but still. The one time. The, the one time. The one time. Well, I mean, I'm supposed him. to understand that. <laughs> oh, so Andres has a thing called a vibe check. Like, he talks to you, and if he doesn't talk to you, especially in Twitter spaces, which we usually do sometimes, he'll look at your profile and just see, like, look at your bi profile bio and look at the tweets you retweeted and all that stuff just to see what he could get from just looking at your entire profile pretty much and if he thinks that you're a vibe he'll let you in if not he'll just like you're not a vibe but to the one person he did it to the one person he met at blfc he was really chilling with like there's talking and having blasts and all that stuff and he passed a vibe check but come to find out you also lied about having something Oh, that. I remember. Yeah. We'll, we'll leave that in the down low. Just out of respect. Uh, so, I wanted to ask one thing. And what do you think is the most scariest jobs that people do? Anywhere that's not in America, because no other country besides Europe has uh, safety standards. Well, <laughs> well, just in the niche of just like in America, like if there's a job that's very scary in America. I could say. Um, there is one job that there's a guy that has to manually climb up the, the tower, like a cell phone tower. I'm so, not sure what kind of maintenance he does, but do you know what I'm talking about? That was the first thing that came into my mind where you're talking about scary jobs. To be fair, I do it because I get paid $50,000 to change a light bulb. I will climb that tower to do it. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> I don't care. Not, I'm not wait, that scared of heights. 
I'm not oh, that really? scared of heights. Okay. okay. Any other jumps that come to mind that are very scary? Hmm. <sighs> It's a very... I'm sure there are plenty of scary jobs out there. I just can't think of any of them at the moment. Um, fast food worker. I don't know. <laughs> I know that's a... That one's a terrifying say, job, honestly. I would also say being a security guard at a prison, it can be very intimidating. Oh, actually, that's a very good answer, yeah. Um, doing anything inside the prison at the job. Because yeah. my thing is... You have to deal with cellmates. You have to... Which, they can be very unpredictable. Yeah, and you do not know if one day just happens, there might be a riot. And then, at that point, your life is in danger. Three, especially if you're a female that goes into a uh, prison. Because we know how... Honestly, here, like, here's the thing is, we all know furries or... um. Very, very, very horny. But horny pr prison cellmates are much more horny because they don't have the chances of actually having outside interactions with people like we do. And the only people they see are each other and maybe, say, a female security guard. And that's all they oh, get. Now yeah. I'm saying this because I had a friend that used to work at a prison and she used to wear like loose clothes as much as possible. Oh Jesus. So um, yeah, I'm that's what I would say. There was one job that was not in America that I saw, but these guys were sulfur miners. And I'm not sure what country it was in, but... Fiction? Fiction. Well, now. All right, I, I guess it's time for me to take over the show. Uh, sorry to disappoint, but Fiction has now died. Rest in peace, my boy. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Let's, uh... <laughs> Are we just going to end it there? <laughs> You better like, comment, and subscribe. Otherwise, I'm gonna come to your house. And I'm gonna make you... i make... Cook me breakfast. Hey Whiplash, what runs the internet? What furries? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so furries run the internet, everyone. The truth has been revealed. Well, I mean, to be fair. We definitely seem to be taking over a lot of places. <laughs> like hospitals. Um, see, hospitals. There are a lot of engineers out there, especially um, ITs. Like, there are so many. Oh, my God. I have four friends that are working in the IT field. <laughs> out of, I think, eight, nine of us. Yeah. Um, furry, actually, you know what, excuse me, furries dominate the IT field, let's just say that. It, it, it's pure domination, there's no, there's nothing else, it's just pure domination when it comes to IT. Now, the second to me, what I see a lot of is either engineers or nurses. A lot of EMTs. Well, EMT, I'm, just you know, a lot of hospital... <laughs> I'm back. Welcome back. I, I gave you the good old WIP. Conrad Curse right. lives in me. I say WIP. <laughs> Not the con. His curse passed on to me. Great. Now I gotta figure oh, out wait. how I. Scorchy was I cool to down? meet. Well, hold on. I uh, I have to adjust my seating because I was just sitting on my armchair. <laughs> Also, I guess he likes my ass too. And the show I put on in the room. 
<laughs> you don't have I mean, to. You just bleep it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay. Yes. I crashed, everybody, and I am back. So the Conrad Rest curse lives in me right ripperonis. now. Ripperonis. Yeah, big ripperonis. ripperonis. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. I don't even remember what I was talking about. I, I honestly couldn't, because as soon as you started what you were saying, you just kind of started cutting out. It's like, huh? What? Uh, oh, I was cutting out? Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, so, no. I, I have no idea what you were talking about. Honestly, we were talking about bad jobs, I believe, and thank you. No, yours. we were talking about scary jobs. That's what we were talking about. Oh, well, about. scary jobs. Uh, let's see, what's... I think mining can be a scary job in general, because that's a very unpredictable, like... That and oil fields. There we go. Oil fields and that. Military jobs can also... There's a specific military job that I know people had to do, which was if they wanted to defuse a bomb. I don't know what job was, title that is. I was thinking that one too. Or? But there might be other worse jobs in the military. Like, we don't know what actually goes on. Because me and you are not in the military. No, we don't. We don't know anything. But if there is any military furries out there that actually watch our podcast show, let us know what is your scariest... Well, okay, in your opinion, what is... The scariest job that you know in your branch. That's a good way of saying that. But before we continue on, be sure to hit the subscribe button and follow us for more content. If you want to know and keep up with more... Ah, I, I lost my That's right, he wasn't there for that. That's right, you weren't there for that. I already did that. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Can I... I'm going to cut that one. Okay, let's try this again. Before I mean, we never did it. Oh, you already did? Yeah, when you were gone, I just went up to the camera, did my thing, like normal, like doing... There we go. Well, now I just accomplished like 20 people's fetishes. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> the only thing I can think of right now in terms of jobs is... Disgusting jobs. There's a lot of disgusting jobs out there, too. Anything with sewage. Anything with sewage. Anything with sewage, yes. Very much so. Anything with sewage. Why don't we have robots doing that right now? I'd rather have robots be doing that. Yeah, I, I don't like... I couldn't imagine, like, sitting in a factory all day and smelling pure, raw... Ammonia and feces. Boobity, boobity, boop, boop. You have your way of saying it, I have the scientific way of saying it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's a scientific way of saying it, but I'm just going to say... I mean, fecal matter is a realistically a way of saying it, but... Fecal matter. I like saying the better way. The be I like saying it the other way, because it sounds sounds less atrocious. <laughs> less atrocious? Yes, poopity boopity boopity. Poopity yes. boopity boopity boop. All right. <laughs> poopity boopity boopity boop. What well, could be another disgusting job? It could also be being Ow. a scientist. Some science jobs could be nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Colton gave me that that stare. He's like, "You bitch." Yeah, depending, there is some scientific jobs that are pretty disgusting. You can't deny that, Colton. You're the one that went into the field. A colonoscopy. Well, that seems more like a doctor's thing. Yes, yeah, so well, study the, shit. The one disgusting job that he would say is being a cancer doctor. Cancer doctor? Yeah, because there's too many PhD students going into that field. It's just too competitive and it's too easy to get in, but. It's probably paying well. It pays well, though. I mean, assuming getting your PhD no, in any sort. Doesn't? Getting your PhD and being a cancer researcher doesn't get you shit. If, there's, if it's too competitive in that field, then it's not as good. True. This is why, um, here's the thing is, this is why nurses right now are very, uh, like, okay. Uh, nurses right now are very, there are lots of jobs open. It's not a very, it's not an easy field to get into because it takes a lot of requirements, a lot of, from what my brothers went through to get into that, my, well, my brother and sister-in-law, they both... They had no social life getting into a nursing degree, from what I remember. And 
then the other one which is what i do right now like truck driving like truck driving right now even though there's a lot of them it's still a very much needed field and there's still a lot of people hiring yeah because everyone needs fields. to deliver something now i would think driving a truck it's not, it's like to some people, it is probably scary because they think driving a big thing like that is like it's gonna scare them, they're not gonna drive it correctly, and it's just like gonna be everywhere. It is honestly not that bad. It's just driving a big car with air brakes and, and driving a 30,000 pound vehicle is pretty much what it is. But it's not that bad. In my reason, like when I actually drive, what I worry about is other drivers. I don't have because I, drivers on the road. Oh, I don't either. That's why. That's why I have a camera system in my own car. But thinking of that, yes. Let me. Me and Colton went to Washington D.C. and oh my God, the drivers there were impatient as shit. You sounds like my people. <laughs> oh no! I thought I was gonna break. I thought I was gonna have the the whiplash curse. Then okay. But here's my. But my my real question about this situation is the fact that people in Florida, I I don't I can't even count on both hands how many people have cut me off at this time. They think it's a great idea to cut off a semi truck. Here here's my thing is I accidentally like this is something that happened to me one day accidentally because this was a very tight situation I was in and I accidentally backed up into a vehicle which it was fine it got taken care of it was not on my not my fault because in the parking lot so nothing is on record for me which is good but at two miles an hour i backed into a rear door of a silverado and i literally crunched it whoops <laughs> but like i literally whoops. cut like the metal on the door was literally cut open with where the back end of the truck went into now think about that if a semi truck can do that doing two miles an hour reversing can you imagine what a semi truck can do to you if you get in front of someone and then people are immediately braking and then since you did that now they don't have the space to actually brake in time and guess what you're gonna be you're gonna be that car that gets scrunched up from behind yeah i like i've seen videos of like semi trucks who have hit cars and those cars like pretty much explode into Literally a firewall because they hit the gas tank, and two, they explode into a shit ton of pieces as well. This is why I can't understand when people don't pay attention when they're driving. Like, on a highway, it's completely dangerous doing that to someone because you don't know on the highway whenever there's going to be a traffic jam that happens because there might be a wreck. And that's happened to me plenty of times. Like, I'm just like, I'm just serious about this because this is more about people's lives now. <laughs> like, if you're going to do something stupid, at least do it on roads where it's like 30 miles an hour not on a highway where it's 75 or 70. is there any jobs in florida that involve like dealing with gators plenty but not here <laughs> not where i live at on the way down to orlando in a 25 mile radius it was a three same fucking signs over and over it was just like painting florida as this one thing we do in this state it was we have gators we have oranges and then we have a hooker truck stop <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that was the same three signs for 25 miles <laughs> it was this oranges gators and hooker truck stop like that was it the one thing you never do in florida is swim in the water when you're in the middle of florida exactly this was in central florida too this is like where that was like it was pretty much painting Florida as the stereotype that Florida is, which is alligators, oranges, and Florida men. Florida men are very interesting people. <laughs> I've seen them pretty get much. arrested for dumb stuff, but I don't know. I, I don't know if Florida is just as bad as Louisiana. They got some mean gators. Well, they have. They actually have people who can actually wrestle gators, which is surprising. But they also got Cajun people. The Cajun people are. People I wouldn't fuck with, honestly, I'm not gonna lie. Those are a different yeah. breed of people. Okay. Also, they cook really good. <laughs> well, yeah, who doesn't like a good jumbo shrimp? Exactly. Well, besides Colton, because he can't show up us. But anyways, this is going to do include today's episode. Hope you guys enjoy it. And, um, well, with us going to come at the camera, he's going to give you a big-ass surprise.
There's the big ass surprise. <laughs> <laughs> That's the surprise. Well, <laughs> but you all have a good night. And then thank you for listening to the podcast. You just remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you don't, I'm going to find you and I'm going to come eat you. Let me know if he harasses you. And that's a wrap. I will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was silly. Yeah, but you gotta make it silly. Yes, you do. Oh, you, you have no idea what other silly stuff we have in mind for this. Oh, oh no. no. What's the other what? silly stuff? Oh, God. Uh, so, like, when you just did your crotch shot, I was like, hey, what we should put on there is, like, a QR code to the eventual Twitch and Discord. And or oh, say, that's a like, good hey, idea. Twitch and Discord coming soon. There you go. Do that. Do that. Can we do that, Colton? I can't hear you. Talk. We're both on Discord and whatnot. See, I'm going to say my crotch gives good information.